Welcome, Dr. James Beckett, Sports Card Insights, here with Brad Bethune, a Texas card dude, and uh, Rich Klein, Uncle Rich. We're going to talk about smaller card shows. Brad just got back from one. I used to love to go to small card shows, but first, thanks sponsors, Beckett Media, Beckett Grading, Beckett Authentication, Compsy.com, Burbank Sports Cards, Mike Stadium Sports Cards, Heritage Auctions, Sugden Scott Auctions, Panini, Upper Deck, and Tops. Of course, my favorite small show is Rich's show, <laughs> which he hasn't had for a while. And I've seen Brad there too. But Brad, welcome to the show. Rich and I are on this a lot. We just thought we'd bring you into the discussion and talk about the smaller show. You just went to one in Texarkana, is that yes, correct? Yes, first time behind the, the table officially. Did the Texarkana show. It was a good experience. It was a learning experience. Positive and negatives. Well, Positive was it one-tenth as many dealers as Kyle has in his big show and one-tenth as many customers. Was the equilibrium similar? It was more like one of the Rich's shows. I know. Or the older before Kyle got really big and did the big Dallas card shows. If you remember his small... The Frisco. The Frisco shows and the Allen shows. It was more that size, probably about a 1,200 square foot room. So everybody got to, uh, got spread out. So it was very comfortable. Nobody felt crowded. It being my first show and my wife being with me, we were very... So it was a vacation. Yeah, kind of staycation. It was a staycation. We turned it into a staycation. Was it a two-day or one-day? It was a one-day show. It was a, uh, started at 10 and ended at 4. You had a guest star there. Uh, we did. Billy Sims did autographs there. He's a really good guy. And if he had, didn't get injured, he's he's, he's not Barry Sanders, but he's in the Hall of Fame, yeah. And yeah. did he bring his Heisman Trophy with him? No, but he did bring his ring that he liked to show everybody. <laughs> Do you think he was a big draw there? No, I mean, he wasn't a big draw. They, but the, so why were people coming to this small show? They didn't, unfortunately. So it wasn't as well attended as you like? No, I probably had about maximum 40 people come across my, my table. Um, How many total people do you think attended? Hundreds? I would say if it was more than 75, it'd, it'd be... Really? Yeah, it was not very well promoted, and the promoter admitted that it wasn't very well promoted. As he was giving you a partial rebate and on your... No rebate or anything <laughs> like that, but... I want to stay positive. Did the other dealers do well? Was there an example of a dealer that did well, or were you... I said they did well, but saying that you did well and doing well are two different things. Um, I was disappointed for it being my very first show, but there was a lot of positives that came out of the show. My wife and I pre-staged the show, so we didn't discuss, or air quotes, discuss how we were going to set up. We really got to enjoy each other's company a lot. She learned what I was trying to do. A true fact, honest, raising my hand, she sold more than I did. So she had a blast. We just enjoyed each other's company. It was nice. But the pace of it was less than what at Kyle's bigger shows. Right, right. Was... Yeah, but I you'd mean... like it to be more hectic because you'd like to sell more cards. Yeah. And so, then... But were the, were the collectors coming, were they pleased with the selection? Were they thinking, were they shopping at the dealer next to you? Or did you bring the wrong stuff? Or Because that's one of the criticisms of small shows. You don't have quite the selection. The selection was fantastic. There was only like one one or two people that had vintage. It was across the board. You had memorabilia, you had vintage, you had shiny, you had wax. Everything was represented. The dealers were friendly. Everybody was talking with, uh, with one another, having a good time. There were some lessons that I learned what to bring and what not to bring. But one of the things was Billy Sims was there for autographs. I didn't bring any Billy Sims stuff. I didn't bring any... Dallas Cowboy cards. I brought Ranger cards because it was in Ranger season. I brought baseball because it's baseball season. The the football that I brought was ultra modern first and last two year rookie cards. I could have brought a different player. So there were some lessons that I really learned on what to bring and what not to bring. One of the lessons, because you're here talking to me and Rich, and both of us have attended a lot of shows, been a dealer at a fair number of shows over the years, and promoted shows. Mm -hmm. And so I'm just curious, you've attended a lot of shows, mm -hmm. now you've set up, would you have any desire to be a promoter that maybe Rich and I could talk you out of that? <laughs> because you saw that, that it's not easy to promote a show. Rich mm -hmm. does a great job, at least back when he was able to do that. Well, but did, do you have some appreciation for that that you didn't have? And, and Rich, chime in here because being on both sides of the table and then being the person in charge of the whole show is... I, I will say I was very disappointed when you and I were talking pre-show, mm -hmm. and I looked up, and it wasn't even in the Beckett show calendar. Now, that's a 30-second decision, and the world may have changed a bit from when I did shows a couple years ago, and hopefully we can start doing the synagogue show again. But I would ask people when I ran my monthly show, how did you find out about us? And the preponderance of the people, probably a plurality, 
So I found out through the Becca calendar. And that's a simple 30-second mm -hmm. thing to do that doesn't really even have to get approved usually, or if it does, it's an automatic approval like a day later. And it's wondering, why aren't you taking advantage of the simple promotions? I didn't study what else he did or didn't do or she didn't do. But if you're not taking advantage of the simple things that are really easy, why are you only doing it on Facebook? That's not really helping. Well, was this a, a newer promoter? Was this a, a rookie? No, it's not. Was he a veteran promoter? He has a very successful show in Longview, Texas. Okay. That, that I'm going to be attending on the other side of the table on the 18th of this upcoming month. So he is held successful shows. Yeah. The the one thing that I'll, I will say is it is the first show they've had in Longview in 10 years. You mean at Texarkana? Or, excuse me, in Texarkana in 10 years. So there wasn't any the Soil has not been cultivated. Right. And the, people, the guys that were there were like, oh my gosh, thank you for bringing this back. But for a new guy there, I, I just don't think it was... Okay. And yet I would have thought the exact opposite. If you haven't had a show in the area for 10 years... It would be It would packed, be, yeah. be absolutely packed. So that tells me that my guess is that person that did a more minimal promotional job than they should have. They just thought, because of that, hey, I don't have to do that much because we haven't had one for such a long time. There's so much pent-up demand. Okay, to go back in memory lane, and Rich was probably doing this to some extent too. When I went to shows as a dealer, I didn't come with empty pockets. I made sure I had some extra money there because when it was a terrible show, and this maybe you didn't go to a terrible show, but when the show is not as well attended and I didn't do as well selling cards, sometimes... That was an opportunity for buying cards, if there weren't that many dealers there, that somebody would walk up and say, hey, I've got some cards for sale, or you just didn't buy them. I bought a lot of collections as a dealer at the show when people said, hey, I've got some stuff, or I've got it at home, can I bring it? And I'd say, sure. So do you get offered, did, were you offered things to buy at that show? Because that happened. that's happening a lot on individual cards. Right. I was more interested in the collections, but... The only thing that I was offered, and I took it, was a trade, a two-for-one trade in cards. And I did take the, the two deal. Two-for-one value? Two-for-one. Well, it was a straight-up one-for-one card. And then the guy said, here, I don't. I think the value is X. Here's another secondary card. I got the better end of the deal. I, I tried to give the card back to him. He was insistent. So I pushed once, didn't push again. But there wasn't people actually going around saying, hey, I have these cards. Would you like to sell I will say my mistake from being on the opposite side of the table is I only got away from my table to go say hi to the people that I knew. I didn't think to go looking for buying opportunities. Okay. So that is something that, that I will surely correct in the next okay. shows. Now, I, I will tell you that I only buy cards from maybe three or four people so far at the Dallas Card Show because most of the people are dealing in shiny, happy, shiny new cards mm -hmm. that I don't know enough about. And when I look in their quarter boxes or dollar, their dollar boxes, they're my quarter boxes. And it's like, why would I want to pay a dollar for a card that so I'm... So you can put it in your quarter box. Right. I, I right. feel the same way sometimes. And so I only buy from some known quantities when I do Kyle's Dallas Card Show. At the small show, we call it a smaller show, but it was a 100-table show by the airport. Mm -hmm. I, I actually bought from some newer people there because they had new... I did too. And it was fun seeing new stuff. I I spent a lot less money than I did at the National, but in some ways I had more fun doing it. The smaller the show, the more relaxed it could be, that you're not squeezed that much. But did you feel like the configuration was similar to the bigger shows in terms of the showcases and people with more sophisticated displays, or was it more casual? Because you just see spotlights and sparkling cases and things like that. Okay, so funny. We were the ones with the spotlights and the flashing okay. lights. And my, my wife, amazing, awesome lady that she is, she had streaming lights with, with flashing lights. And then we made sure that we had lights highlighting the autographs and lights highlighting the cards. And no one else really did that. But they did have nice showcases. They did have cases. They had... They had shelving. They had all the other stuff that you would normally see at the show. But we were the ones with all the lights and the glitter. And that was because of my wife, and it was awesome. And everybody complimented us on it. But it was nice. Could that have been too sophisticated for that audience? You know, I only accepted compliments with money. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, there is that potential. There well, is that Texarkana potential. is a very special place. It is. It's named because it's right on the border of Texas and Arkansas. So it's half Arkansas, Brad. It is. It You're is. the Texas card dude. Do you think that was the, half the people coming been. from the wrong side of the... It could have been. Actually, been. there's two high schools there. There's Texarkana, Texas High School mm -hmm. and Texarkana, Arkansas High School. It could have been. Bitter enemies. It could have been. a tough town. 
I did have some people that, that gave me a little bit of guff for the Texas, and I'm like, I'm, I'm Texas, I'm born and raised in Texas. I mean, it's, but I we took it as guff. And it was, what about the, so that's a two and a half hour drive? Three. Okay. It was a well, three hour drive. Okay. So is that your limit, you think? Would you go to Oklahoma City? Would you go down to Houston? Would you go to Ooh. Austin? So if you had a show circuit around here mm-hmm. and you're driving, and they're medium sized shows or smaller shows. Yeah. And again, if your wife's going and she's enjoying it, then. Yeah, you know, two or three hour drive is not. But something. isn't Oklahoma City really only two hours from Denton or something like that? Did yeah, it's it's, from it's two two and a half hours. So that's three hours is really my physical limit. Right. Right? After three hours, I got to get out. I, I got to spend 20, 30 minutes or whatever. So I figured anything around Texarkana is probably the furthest south. That San Antonio has a very great show following, but if I do San Antonio, I'm going to have to stay overnight yeah, both yeah. ways. Houston, I could do in a day. Okay. North Oklahoma, yeah, I, I would love to do Oklahoma City. Tulsa's a little far, but I'd love to do shows in Oklahoma City. I, I know from experience, Tulsa's five hours from here. Yeah, yeah. Tulsa's a little farther. Rich, any last wisdom? Because you've worn, worn all the hats. Is there a show below which you've optimized your show at the synagogue because of the room and the energy that you want and the quality of dealers you want to bring in there? I know the most people I ever drew at the hotel shows I did was 154. Kyle, I know, has drawn more at his small Frisco and Allen shows than that. But one of the things is that you, 80 tables, I don't consider a small show. I consider 50 and less a small show. I never wanted to run an 80 table show. That's a lot of work. And 40 table shows was pretty easy to figure out what you wanted to do. And if not all the tables sold, I could just spread out. That's, there's a psychology of that. In a small show, do you want to look at, make it look sparse? You don't want a few dealers in a huge room. Looks like nobody's there. Yeah. So you, you want to make it look like it's a little bit crowded just to give that buzz to it, maybe. Well, I did take a photo of a panoramic and send it to, to Mr. Newman. And he, when I sent it to him, he goes, ouch, that's too far apart. So okay. the room may have been too big. Yeah. For the for, for what was needed. And on the other hand, when I was a promoter, I liked having a little extra room for people to walk. We're not a ton, but the synagogue, we knew what we had to work with. And even at the hotel, I knew what I had to work with. And if I wasn't sold out, I'd tell people, go spread out. Yeah. Because I'd rather the, the, the show look more full. So one thing, the other thing with it, you're also dealing with a smaller scale, mm-hmm. which is easier to deal with. And I know you and I have talked about you want to someday run a show. What lesson, if any, do you think you learned from this show? Oh, promotion is key. Promotion is key. Getting the word out. The difference between just seeing what Kyle does because he's built it up so successfully, taking some of the stuff that that he does and then looking at some of the stuff that wasn't done, night and day. One of the things is, I will tell you, when Bill Sutherland, one of our former Beckett teammates, used to do my show, he used to pre-stage some of his items, put that on Craigslist and says, come see me at Rich's show and have these items. In other words, he would actually play defense himself and promote where he was going to be, and put and tell deal, and he'd have people come to the show. And I was always fairly mellow about letting people in early, as long as a dollar, I don't care. You can come on in whenever you're here, and he might have 15 people come to see him before the show opened. That's perfectly fine by me. But that's playing defense where you're promoting the show. I send out a promo as long as I have some advance notice for even the smaller ones for everyone at Kyle's mm. show. Because the more people see, the better off it is. He doesn't have to. Kyle has a great mailing list. I have a pretty good mailing list too, and if I can help Kyle draw more people, you know who else it helps? Mm-hmm. It helps you. Yes. I think there's a symbiosis, a hobby. We want everybody to enjoy the show, the promoter as well as the dealers, as well as the collectors. And at this day and age, usually that's the case. I, I'm sorry that your experience at Texarkana was not opti- optimal, but we'll do better next time and uh, hopefully have a good experience in Longview. Most definitely. So thanks, Brad. Thanks to Rich. We'll be back again tomorrow with another episode.